Hey everyone, welcome to episode 13 of Disney Channel Original Newbies. I'm Joanna. And as usual, I am Sam. And today we are going to talk about the 1999 everyone's favorite movie, Horse Sense. So before we get into the movie, do you understand the title of the movie? Not really. Me either. It doesn't make any sense. No pun intended. It makes no sense at all to me. <laughs> no. No. I get the first. Actually, no, I take that back. I understand the horse part. Yeah, I also understand the horse Because there's a few part. horses. A there's couple at dozen. least two. More than two. Well, that was the couple part of a couple dozen. Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 a couple dozen horses. <laughs> yeah. Sense, not really sure. It doesn't sound like a pun. I don't really understand it. No, and it's not like a phrase that they used at any part. Of Although the movie. I, I jokingly thought they would say the name of the movie at some point when he says like about horses. I, I was gonna say, oh, horse scent. No, no, not at all. Never said. Not like can of worms where they say can of worms or something. I time. opened a can of worms. I thought at some point they would say, he's showing some good horse sense or something like that. Do you I think don't it has know. to do with the money issues? Was it the sense? And it should be with the C oh, instead? Oh, yeah. It was a typo. Yeah. You yeah. think they totally just typoed and like, oh, we got to keep it. It's in the name of the script says uh, S in it. <laughs> we, no, no, we already, pr- the name of the script had a C. And then when they were designing the movie poster. They put an S and they're like, oh, man, we already printed all of these. It's what a bummer. horse sense with an S now. <laughs> yeah, I 100% think that's probably what happened. Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. So basically what this movie is about is there are two cousins, one who lives in Beverly Hills, I think they said. It was L.A., Beverly Hills, yes. one of those. Very, very rich, well off. There's a second cousin who lives in Montana. Montana. Mm -hmm. who is not well off. They live on a ranch. He lives with his mother and his father a couple years ago or last year passed away. It seemed fairly recent. Yeah, definitely recently. And the younger cousin comes to Beverly Hills, hangs out there for four or five days. And then after that, at some point, we'll get into it. The older cousin goes out to Montana to live on the ranch for a month. And that's the premise of the movie. There's a little bit more to it. But not much more. <laughs> Those are the, the major steps, I would say. Yeah. There's obviously more themes and things like that, but that's really the uh, the basis for the plot of the movie. Yeah. Well, when um, Tommy, who is the younger cousin, goes to visit Mike, who is the older cousin in L.A., Mike kind of ignores him. Tommy doesn't leave the house almost the entire time because he's just waiting for Mike to hang out with him. And Mike is like, I've got some sort of college to attend. Yeah. I didn't really figure that out. Fake law school, real college kind of situation, it seemed like. Yeah, fake law. We'll go with fake law. I have fake law school um, and a girlfriend and I have things to do. So, bye. Going So, when we first meet the two characters, we don't really know how old they are. We just know one is going to college or some sort of classes. We don't really know. And the younger one, we're assuming, is still in school. So how old do you think they both are? Well, we know one of them later on, but when you first saw them, how old did you think they were? When I first saw Tommy, the younger one, I assumed that he was uh, maybe 12 or 13. Yeah, I I was going to say 13, 14, something in that range. And Mike looks like he's in his 30s. I would say looks like 31, (laughs) acts like he's 14, but... I'm guessing because of the context, he's around 20, 21 years old. Yeah, that's. I think they said he's 20 I, at some yeah, point. Yeah, they do say that. The dad says you're 20 years old. Start Which acting he like does it. not look. No, he looks like he's in, th- in his mid 30s. Yeah, that was not. Well, they had to cast it that way for a reason, but yeah, that's there's definitely a bigger age gap between the two of them. Yeah, I feel like that. That wasn't the best. That was not the most believable part of the movie. Yeah. Well, I'll, we'll get into this. Well, you didn't know this going in, but I knew this because I've seen this movie and I've seen other things with these two actors in it. So Tommy and Michael, the two protagonists in this movie, are brothers in real life. And they have a third brother, the Lawrences. And they were very big on Disney because they had their own show previously 
or maybe it was the same time as this movie. I can't really remember. I think it was before called Brotherly Love, which is the three of them about basically three brothers in their relationship with one another. So I remember like the anticipation for this movie and watching this movie when it first came out. I don't remember the total specifics, but just like the background of it that it was like, oh, it's the uh, the brothers from Brotherly Love in this movie. This is a movie that you watched when you were younger. 100%, yes. Do you remember at all when you watched it? Because you just said that you kind of uh, were looking forward to it. Did it live up to your expectations? So I don't know if I want to get into it right now. Uh, whatever, we'll get into it. It wasn't one of the movies that stood out from my childhood. Like, remember it back when we, before we watched it? I did remember what it was and that the Lawrences were in it and all that. And kind of the basic premise of it. But watching it now, I actually think I like it better now than I did as a kid. Really? Yeah, I like the like the kind of moral and the premise behind it. I think I appreciate it more now. Interesting. But we'll, we'll get into that when we get to yeah. the end of the movie. But I'm assuming you didn't like it that much, judging by your physical reaction. I did not think it was great. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll so leave we'll, it yeah, there wait, for yeah. now. We'll, we'll get into like mm-hmm. the, the premise and all that. So... Like you said, he comes out to Beverly Hills. Tommy, that is, the younger one, comes out to Beverly Hills. And he loves Michael before he comes out there. They were at some, like, cousin reunion years prior. He made him a, what was it, a whistle? A whistle. Yeah, so he, he whittled a whistle. He's infatuated with Michael. And Michael just blows him off for four full days in Beverly Hills. And the last day when he's supposed to bring him to, to Disneyland. Disneyland, which he's very excited for. He understandably dropped, he drops him off at a place called kitty zone i think it was called which is clearly for toddlers so he drops him off at kitty zone and leaves him to go like to a horse race i mean he's, he's just a fat show that his girlfriend the girlfriend's father is there michael's a total asshole the entire four days that he's there oh he's the worst and tommy has a terrible time he has fun the first night because there's like popcorn and candy and Brink is on the TV at the oh, house. That, that was amazing. I was Let's dying. put on the TV. It's Brink. That was so funny. It was great, great placement there. That combined with, look at all the VHS tapes we have. Yeah, that was very funny. The lap of luxury. <laughs> so yeah, Brink was on the TV, which is a, one of the highlights in the first half of the movie. So he wastes the entire week, brings him to the kitty zone, leaves him there for like hours, it seems like. So he goes home alone, totally wasted away, gets nothing done. Michael, on the way to pick him up from Kitty Zone, gets through a car accident, a hit and run, the whole shebang. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hit and run, meaning that he hit the person and then- He ran. Ran. Which is delved into deeply later in the movie. So yeah, so Tommy really resents Michael at this point for kind of just leaving him. I don't blame him. him. I 100% don't blame him. Could you imagine if he went to California as a kid and couldn't go to Disneyland and went to Kitty Zone instead? That would be terrible. Although now going on vacation and just sitting around and doing nothing sounds kind of nice. Although I wouldn't want to fly out to California to do it. Is that because you're older or because of COVID? Yes. <laughs> we So we went to Disneyland. We did. This pretty, year. In February, right before we couldn't do it anymore. We like to live dangerously. We were one of the last few million people that went to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> oh man are they they are open now right i'm pretty sure are they well disney world i'm guessing is open because that's florida but i don't know if yeah, disney florida open. florida doesn't care um i don't know if disneyland is open if i had to guess it is but i'm not sure uh any listeners in california if disneyland is open please we let us know in the we, comments we can't after look you it leave up. us a five we star definitely rating can't look it up ourselves. <laughs> so you gotta do the, the heavy lifting for us so we get, they get to a fight. Michael's parents find out that he kind of abandoned him the entire week. The um, What was the woman's name that works for them? Arlene. The, Arlene's like the nanny. Not really nanny, but She's like the, the housekeeper. I yeah. cannot believe that you lot. forgot her name. She's the best character yeah, in the movie. Is, Arlene's pretty great. I'll definitely got to give you that. They're all mad at him for abandoning him. And they're also mad because the cops come to their house and talk about the hit and run. Not even worth getting into. So his punishment for... Being a terrible person for a week with his cousins there is that he has to get shipped over to Montana to work on Tommy's family's ranch for a month or else he loses like his car and his vacation and whatever else. Yeah, he was going to go to to Europe with his girlfriend, who 
The girlfriend really sucks. sucks. She's the she's oh, worse she's than terrible. Tommy that week. I'm sorry, worse than Michael. Tommy's, yes. Tommy's good. Tommy, yeah, Tommy is great. Tommy's Michael nothing bad. is terrible, and and his girlfriend Gina somehow is worse. Com- the girlfriend is Gina. Um, she's completely not understanding. More like Gina <laughs> from Forty Year Old Virgin. Remember? I don't remember when he goes on like the blind, not blind dates. When he goes like the date pool, whatever. When you date like five people in a row, and he's like, "Oh, Gina," because like the, the name badge is on, and she's like, "No, it's Gina," <laughs> and she's like the very like over the top person. I don't remember that at all. Are you serious? Oh, man. I used to watch 40 year version all the time. I didn't. <laughs> it was one of the first rated R movies I ever saw in the theater because my mom saw it like a couple days prior and I was down in Maryland for some reason. And then she called me. She's like, this is the funniest movie I've ever seen. I was crying, laughing in the theater. You're allowed to go see it because of how funny it is. She called me to tell me this. I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to go see it. So we bought tickets to whatever rated G movie it was. Me and my other friend who was 13 years old and went to see it. And it was great. The first rated R movie I saw in a theater or ever? in theater that I was allowed to see because I was 17 was Borat. Wow. Yeah. And look where we are now. And look where we are now. Where you've already watched the second one. Wow, wow, wow. I have a chair. <laughs> Put that chair down. <laughs> king of the castle. King of the castle. <laughs> oh, man. So I think what we left off is Michael. Gina. Right, Gina sucks. We'll forget Gina. We'll, we're not going to talk about her the rest of the movie. She's the worst. Hopefully. <laughs> or we should talk about her because she is the worst. <laughs> one, one or, it will go one of two ways. We either won't talk about her or we will talk about e- her way. because she's the worst. Either way. So he ships out to Montana and he lands there wearing like a ridiculous cowboy outfit. with like a, It's the kind hat. of... The equivalent of in Back to the Future 2 or 3. The third one's the Old West one, if that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah, when he goes back to the Old West and he that's puts funny. on what he thinks is a cowboy outfit and then he lands in the Old West and they're like, uh, what the fuck are you wearing? All I could think of was like if Zoolander was a cowboy. That's spot on. Yeah. That is a Zoolander cowboy. Because it's like the same. He's basically like a Zoolander when he has to work in the mines for like the first week he's in Montana. <laughs> I am the black lung. Who's winning the match? Merman. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, wait, yeah. no, that's the 13th year. <laughs> um, but one funny thing to come. Oh, and also, you also didn't care at all about this. Even what I mentioned to you during the movie is when he lands in Montana, he bumps into like a random dude who like says, oh, nice boots. That's the third brother from Brotherly Love. And I was like, oh, it's the oh. guy. And you're like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Sam. I was like, all right, never mind. So that's there's there's three of them. Yeah. In real life. They're brothers in real life. We just talked about this. Yes. The three of them. Yeah. And that's him also. See, no, when you asked me while we were watching the movie, you asked if that guy that he bumped to in the airport had any other significance in the oh, rest of the okay. movie. That's and I said, was. no. Oh, okay, okay. So I care whole... deeply that that's the third brother, so had the, tri- the whole trifecta, but he was in the movie for literally two seconds. But he did have a line, so I guess it was more of a cameo. And it was a meaningful two seconds. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. He clowned on his shoes. Don't well, blame him. He did the look at those with the, the, the hand what facing the yeah, unbelievable. Um, but the one funny thing is, so we meet these guys, Mule and Twister, who are like the bad. They're the ranch not, they're hands. Not bad. They're actually good guys who are yeah, just very strong, big guys. Who yeah, are they're, they're the tough guys. Right. Mm-hmm. And he asks him about his boots. And Michael says that they are Italian boots. And then one of them's like, oh, what does that mean? They move with an accent? <laughs> Which assumes there's no cows in Italy. I thought that was pretty funny. It was okay. It was okay. Oh, I think it effectively showed that it doesn't matter how expensive your boots are. They're going to be covered in shit by the end of the day. 100%. The one thing I did dislike in general about the whole time he's in Montana is that he had cell service everywhere. He did. And also, except for two scenes, the one where he's actually shoveling shit, um, which is very early on, the first day that he's working on the ranch. Right. And I think it's the last day he's on the ranch where he helps p- 
pull a horse out of a mud pit. Right. His shirts are clean the entire time. A hundred percent. They're pristine. His yes. white shirts are pristine. Yep. Yep. All I can think about now with the outfits is Shit's Creek. It's <laughs> <laughs> <As> the brother. <laughs> Audience, we have just started watching Shit's Creek. We're almost finished with season one. We'll probably reference it a lot more now. No it's, more Sopranos references, and yeah. so now only Shit's Creek references. But they both start with the letter S, so yeah, it's thing. basically the same thing. Same yeah. Thing. Um, so, like you said, his first day, he has to shovel like a fifteen foot tall pile of shit of horse shit <laughs> over manure. A uh, bull? Was it bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> it was some type of poop. <laughs> he has to shovel a ton of it. Which seems to take him hours, it looks like. I, I think it would take him hours. It was a gigantic pile. And then at the end of the day, Mule, Twister, and Tommy come back from wherever they were. And this is and they see him fall, stumble with the, the wheelbarrow, and fall into like a liquid shit, it seemed like. Oh yeah, it was at it was at the bottom of the pile. Oh my god. That was gross. It was gross. <laughs> um and they kind of just look at him and go, why didn't you just use the tractor? And he's Mike is like, what tractor? And they're like, the one that's right over there. Which is a running theme throughout the entire time he's in Montana. Oh, it Tommy happens like gets four him times. so many times. It's a real zinger. For good reason. Again, for how shitty he was in oh, California. He should have done him more. Oh, 100%. Um, we also learn early on is that they're having money issues at the ranch. And that they'll have to sell the ranch or like auction things off within four weeks or around four weeks away. So the end of Michael's stay is when they have to auction stuff off at the ranch. When we first find out about their money troubles, I did make a note. Why isn't the rich? I don't know if uh, Tommy's and her uncle was his mom's sibling, but one of them was. The mom is the sister. Is the their moms are sisters? sisters. The moms okay. are sisters, yeah. They're sisters. Um, I didn't know why the rich aunt didn't help, but that is addressed later. And Mike's, not Mike's, Tommy's family is too proud to accept the help. And they also feel that their business, it's a failing business anyway. So there's no reason to invest in it. Yeah, which is really one of the two big premises of the movie is being too proud to really accept money is kind of like the Montana way or the farmer way is uh, definitely hammered in there throughout this movie. And hammered and hammered and hammered. Oh, and one thing you forgot to mention, which I'm very disappointed, is that the banker is the dad from Donnie and Darko. I don't think it was my place to mention it because <laughs> you were much more excited about it than i was i was like wait, I wait think this is, was the, like, is, that, is that the dad from donnie darko yeah, like, i think this is the thing about? that i wasn't excited about that you were i was so yeah. excited i was like wait pause the movie pause the movie is that the dad from donnie darko and you realized it when he had only been on the screen blurry in on like, the screen through a window through, for through approximately a two and a half seconds yeah it's a pretty great call and i was like that's the only time he's in the movie but he comes out later on thank god so i can confirm he, it was actually the whole him. movie yeah see. <laughs> um so going back to the whole thing of michael being played by tommy is when we see the horses for kind of the first time i mean there were horses before but this is a real introduction to the horses and they're gonna ride horses and they tommy's like hey you want to ride this horse i forget the first horse's name do you remember uh, i think slingshot does that yeah, sound right that sounds right yeah yeah so like, you want to ride slingshot and the slingshot is like very skinny and like you can see like the bones in the side of slingshot which is slingshot depressing is a little sad yeah a little yeah that was a little weird. i would not want to ride slingshot either but mostly because i think feel bad. i would break slingshot yeah <laughs> that's fair so he's like no, no no i'm gonna ride that one like a bigger horse that's black and he's like oh it's called black go, go for it we used to call it something else but we normally call it black so he goes on the horse obviously falls off and like it goes crazy and bucks him off and it's like well, actually, well, first off, I was like, I guarantee you could, you could confirm this, Joanna. I can confirm. I was like, I guarantee they call him Black Lightning. I can confirm that the person who saw this movie said, I guarantee they call him Black Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw this movie 11, no, 21 years ago. That's ins the amount, of, the amount of time from the last time I saw this movie to now, it could drink legally. That's how long ago I've seen this movie. You know what? I think I saw Mulan 21 years ago, and I can still quote every single line. But how many times have you seen Mulan? 
560 12,000. How many times <laughs> have I seen this movie? That's not a real number. <laughs> I've seen this movie at most twice. No, at most three times because I saw it a couple days ago with you. Can we just say how I, the number I chose was 560 12? That's a pretty good number. <laughs> I didn't even know those types of numbers existed anymore. I didn't know either. That's a, like how I just glossed over it as if like that was a normal thing to say. Well, back to real numbers. So there was one horse and it kicked them off, which is and then what they what I didn't really get the next scene because they they take the horses to kind of like move the cattle and like. It's a thing that I've noticed that ranchers do from watching they the occasional them? western. Oh, yeah, they were branding the cattle. Is so they know it's theirs? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then they were herding them from one end of the ranch to the other. Well, that part makes sense. Yeah. Like, there's probably like more grass or whatever on certain areas. And this is in the summer, presumably, right? Because I think he's done with college for the semester. I don't know. I feel like when he was shipped off to Montana, he said something about missing school but so maybe i'm month. misremembering oh i don't know eh, whatever it seemed not cold there so i'm assuming it's pretty cold in montana so i'm guessing it was probably probably closer summer. to the summer yeah that would make guess. sense that would make more sense than his parents shipping him off mid-semester yeah so i mean i didn't really care about this scene at all is when they're looking for like wolves and stuff i feel like nothing really happened there besides him getting to a fight with his girlfriend and the phone breaking it's just another scene where both mike and gina are the worst and it's really highlighting yeah how much of the worst they both are yeah um and then also the cows run away and then everyone just walks away and doesn't get the cows again i didn't really get that part either but um in the next scene or the they ran scene where it's the next day they ran through a fence but tommy does say something like we've finished her rounding up most of the cows oh okay so they kind of just wait maybe it's too dark out to do anything i think they just cut the scene but, like, after they ran away, the cows are stampeding and running them over. And then they all walk up to them and, like, oh, the cows just ran away. And then they just turn around, like, walk away instead of just, like, sprinting out there with the horses. They have to go get the horses. I guess, yeah. I guess they can walk toward the horses. Yeah. First, get the horses and then <laughs> sprint to get the cows. That's fair. Yeah. So that scene is kind of the throwaway scene. I don't think there's really much going on there. I'm trying to think what happened next. They Oh, they get into another fight, Michael and Tommy because they kind of like bring up to each other what's going on oh is this the fixing the fence scene this is another scene where tommy uh gives mike a task and says you have to fix the fence but first right, you have to right. put these posts in the in truck the truck and it's the same exact thing as the mm-hmm. tractor scene literally the same thing the truck doesn't work obviously he's it's talking about a truck. different truck it's just stupid stuff yeah um so then tommy gets confronted by michael and then they get into a fight to like go over like Michael's like, oh, I don't really like you. Like the whistle was an old thing. Get over it. Find a new slant. And it's just like that was it of their relationship. Yeah, he was he was even more of a jerk than he had been, which is impressive. Right. Oh, up until this point, we should mention Michael doesn't know that they're having money issues. It's being hidden from him. Yeah. And they don't tell him because they don't think he would care. And at this point, I feel like he might he- care. I don't know. Minimally. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like yeah. he cares about the mother. They seem pretty close. Tommy's mother and I don't know. He Michael. fell asleep while she was talking to him. That's because he got out. He's got an hour worth of sleep the night before. That's why. She was opening up to him. She was pouring her heart out. He was dreaming about what she was saying. She probably hasn't done that in years. Oh, yeah. She hasn't talked to Tommy about these types of things. Come on. There's no way. She should probably see a therapist. It's not the Montana thing to do. That's the issue. It could be. We'll see about that. Um, so they got into a fight. And then finally, I think it was Twister. One of the two guys. I can't remember. I think yeah, it, was Twister, it was Twister. Tells Michael, hey, they're losing the ranch. Kind of shut up and do your job. Because like, they're having all these money issues. And Michael, and Michael feels bad. They have bigger problems than you. Yeah. And Michael feels bad immediately about what's going on. He's like, oh, why didn't they tell me? Blah, blah, blah. He should feel bad. He's an asshole. Of course. But it was not his fault they're losing the ranch. At no, all. It's not his fault, but he was an asshole. Right. Separately, but still an asshole. Totally. So finally, Michael starts doing picking up his slack. He builds a fence really quickly. He starts riding the horse better, um, just showing that he really he cares. He can put in some sort of effort. Yeah, absolutely. 
And then he and Tommy finally talk about the ranch and how it has to be sold and stuff like that. They have they have a little heart to heart where they're finally on the same page now. And they kind of ca- they clearly care about each other. And Michael feels bad about the situation and wants to help out in any way possible. My, I think Mike calls his dad about giving money over. And that's what you said before, that the Tommy's mom won't accept money from Michael's family. Yeah, she won't accept she won't accept money from anyone. It seems like right because she's too proud and doesn't want to really not only show weakness but have to rely on other people for things that she wants to kind of get done. Yes, and it does seem like she is having a bad experience with loans because she. It seems that she took out loans previously for to help medical issues. It was for, for the father for the right, father's medical issues. Yeah, and couldn't pay them back. Right. So it's so, even compounding the issues with money. Exactly. So she doesn't want to take out a loan to pay off a loan. Right. Which makes sense. Totally get it. Yeah. And it was like a lost cause too. She's like, it's not a profitable thing, the ranch. It's never going to make money. We're just never going to come back. We're in too big of a hole right now anyway. So un- totally understandable. Smart woman. Yeah. Not a smart house, but a smart woman this time. If only. If only <laughs> she had a smart house. She deserved the smart to house. win the smart house. That'd be really cool. I smart house was that. in California, right? I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. Was it? I don't. I feel like it was generic it town, York. USA. Middle. What was it? Middleburg. <laughs> Middleburg. <laughs> what if? Oh, this is stupid. Great movie, but stupid. So there's also a tree house that Tommy was building with his father before he died, and at some point, Mike, when Tommy and his mother leave. Mike finishes building the entire treehouse. Like, which it's a big treehouse. It's a big treehouse. Mike has no craftsmanship skills. Zero. And Tommy and his father, who definitely have craftsmanship skills, most likely, barely built any of it. And that's two people that know how to build things. So, how did Michael do that all so quickly? Magic. Oh, he's a magician Mm -hmm. or a wizard. He's turning into a boogeyman. You're a wizard, Tommy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, well, regardless of how unbelievable it is, Mike does decide that he's going to be nice and he's going to finish this treehouse that Tommy has been working on. But when Tommy and his mom get back from wherever it was, I don't remember where they were the bank, going. Probably, I don't know. They were doing something for the day. And Tommy loves it. And he's so happy that the treehouse is done. The exact opposite of that. Oh. Tommy freaks out. He basically has a panic attack. He throws he a starts, hissy fit, I would say. I would say it's more like a panic attack. <laughs> he's clearly grieving okay. for his father. All right, we both agree it's a hissy fit. Clearly grieving for his <laughs> father. Um, he wanted to finish the treehouse himself because it was his project with his dad. And he kind of rips it apart. And then Mike is like, oh, I'm just going to leave now. Yeah. Which was, to be honest, I think that was the best decision Mike made it during the entire movie. I totally agree. And he ends up talking to his girlfriend. And the dumbest line in the entire movie comes up in the scene so he's talking to the girlfriend unless i misheard this and the girlfriend's like oh yeah my friend is going out with leo dicaprio right did she say that she said i don't remember she said my friend's going out with leo dicaprio and mike says leo is so five minutes ago he said no one ever this is 1999 two years prior to this movie leo was in titanic the highest grossing movie in the history of the world up until that point. I feel like he did take a break after Titanic, didn't he? Yeah, for like a year, maybe for two years. Yeah, so this would be the second year. He so was five, five minutes, minutes ago. ago from nineteen. That's insane. This is Hollywood, <laughs> Sam. Things move quickly. <laughs> Sorry, he can't be in a TV show called Brotherly Love, and then also in a movie called Horse Sense. He's just a slacker at this point. (laughs) Ridiculous. So they had that conversation, which is very stupid. Um, We even talked about many of his outfits throughout this movie. Oh, you kind of talked about them, how they're so clean. At some point, he had an outfit on that's a suit with like three buttons. And the only button, the top button, it looks so stupid. I don't remember that at all. Oh, my God. It was the only thing I could think about in the scene. I was like, what is this guy doing? This is insane. I can just imagine you zeroing in on the one buttoned button. I was shaking. 
I'm sorry I didn't notice that I wasn't there for you in your time of need. I needed my weighted blanket. It was that bad. (laughs) (laughs) I think you notice things like that a lot. When people but when people don't properly button their suit or if people sit down and keep their suit buttoned yeah or stand up and yep. don't button their suit you notice so sometimes so in court when you're like talking to a judge by the way i'm a lawyer so when you're talking to a judge you're supposed to stand up unless some judges just tell you to sit down whatever but you stand up when you're talking and then when you're not talking you sit down so i would always have my suit unbuttoned sitting down and if i were going to talk i would stand up while like buttoning my jacket and talk so i was like trying to do both things at the same time I can't not do it. Isn't that kind of suit? I don't know if suit etiquette is the. It's definitely not the right way to phrase it. But no, I think that's it. That's the way you wear a suit. Yeah, when you, you stand when you up and button, button it. it. Right. I don't. Yeah, but it's just a habit for you. Yeah. So the big thing is like, I noticed it the most. It's like sportscasters or like during football games and stuff like that, or like when like pregame shows when it's like five of them like either like sitting or standing. Half of them have their stuff button. Half of them don't have their stuff button. It just looks so ridiculous. And also, people that are not sports or like do sports center and stuff like that, they shouldn't be wearing suits in the first place. Like they look so stupid because you're talking about sports. They should be wearing a football uniform. Yes, just like coaches. I feel like coaches in every sport should be wearing the same uniform as the rest of the team, like they do in baseball. I'm kind of okay with it. Like when we watch soccer and the coach is wearing a suit a- or tracksuit. Depending on the coach. Um, some of them will wear a sweatshirt or a sweater that has the name of the team on it and khakis. Yeah. I feel like that's fine. Well, that's like Arsenal's coach, right? He wears like the sweater usually. Yeah. I but I think like... it's funny. Wouldn't it be funny if like they had to wear just a kit? The full on kit. <laughs> the full kit wanker. Yeah. <laughs> or like I think the funniest would be basketball coaches who are like eighty years old just wearing <laughs> the no sleeves. <laughs> And, or like football coaches wearing a football uniform with a helmet. With the full pads. That'd be so funny. Wouldn't it be hysterical? Like, let's, it, let's start this movement. Like, why did they do that in baseball? I don't know why they do it in that sport, but no other sports. It's traditional, Sam. Baseball's traditional? Apparently. <laughs> this know. is my traditional voice. I think if you make it a lot fun, <laughs> tra- traditional. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Are you okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm traditionally okay. All right, so back to the horse sense. <laughs> oh, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, and T- Tommy makes a new whistle, gives it to him, who cares? And Mike goes home to California the day before the auction, a couple days before the auction. Not really clear. One or two days, very close. Maybe There's it was a week. Between them. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, so Mike kind of redeems himself in Tommy's eyes because he puts in the effort. He shows that he does care about uh, his family, blah, 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 goes back to California. Mike has completely changed. This month in yes. Montana has turned him into a new person. They go to a horse race and he's turned off by it, obviously. But he does Save the calm day. a horse. He does. He's a horse whisperer with whatever her name is, was in that show. But he breaks up with Gina about time. I don't know if he breaks up with her or just says that he's not going to Spain or Europe with her. I think that's the same as a breakup. Maybe. She loves him. She's obsessed with him. I think she's obsessed with having a boyfriend. I don't think it necessarily has to be him. I think she likes him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We don't have enough information. We'll see in the sequel. We don't have enough. (laughs) We'll see in the sequel. Is there a sequel? I'm not telling yet. Oh, God, I hope there's not a sequel. I don't want to sit through this again. Uh, So what Mike does at this point is that he sells his car and he liquidates part of his trust. Oh, they're very, very rich, by the way, Michael and his family. I think we went over this, but yes, they're incredibly rich. They have a giant house in Beverly Hills. So he sells his broken car and he liquidates part of his trust and he wants to use this money to help them out over in Montana and not French Montana. He flies back to Montana, uh, surprises them, and tries to give the money to Tommy's mom, who says, no, I don't want your money. We're selling the ranch. We're going to move in with someone else for a while until we get our- Yeah, the auction's tomorrow. I appreciate the gesture, but it's not going to happen. And around then is when Mike has his light bulb moment. Little epiphany. Yeah. That he knows how to save the ranch. 
because he got a D on a paper and he's going to refer back to that paper to get the answer. Well, as which you is know, clearly correct. As you know, the D stands for delightful. Yes, I think that's what he said. So that was really stupid when he said that. <laughs> a very dumb joke from much earlier in the movie. Gina liked it. Oh, she loved it. She loved everything he did, except for not thinking about her. Yeah, she did not like that at all. It was her least favorite thing. So he has his dad call him and tell him what he wrote in the test, which is very wrong. And it helps him learn about... Land was- trusts. Land trust, yeah. By the way, I took property class in law school. It was a like an hour and a half a day for like weeks, months. Never learned about land trust, I'm pretty sure. If we did, I totally forgot about it. Maybe it's different in California. Maybe. It's Maybe possible. they really drill it into your head so that you get a D on the test, but you remember it at a random later date. Who knows? So he goes to the bank, talks to Donnie Darko's, <laughs> Donnie Darko's dad, <laughs> and he convinces him to go in on the land trust idea. He gives him like a 30-day extension for I don't know what. Yeah, I don't remember what the 30 day. They got a 30 day extension for something. Yeah. And if it's a land trust, they be, they get paid to just watch the land and the animals. Because there are wild horses on the land, so it's the land is a sanctuary for the horses. Right. During this scene where Mike is telling this to Tommy and his mom, he says, "I did the research and I did all this, but he only had like 3 days. Not even no. He had about two hours, maybe, because he thought of this after giving her the money. And that's when he calls his dad and is like, can you read the paper that I basically failed? Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Very stupid. I'm sensing a plot hole here. (laughs) So, yeah, that's basically what happens. Um, I think so. They they go for it. They're okay with this idea because they're not getting money. They just they won't own the land anymore, too. They're just getting paid to watch it. So Which is still kind of a good deal. It's the bank's land. I own the bank. Ipso facto, the bank's their boss. I think at this point, Mike says he wants to stay longer. He w- Yeah, he wants to work on the ranch if they'll have him. Right. And then Tommy asks Mike if he'll help him finish up the treehouse, mm-hmm. which was adorable. It was adorable. And uh, Mike proved himself to be quite the craftsman, so don't blame him. Yeah, totally. I think that's it. Yeah, then they uh, ride off into the sunset. On horses? No, cows. Oh, on cows? Oh, oh, that's also a bull in the movie. A very angry bull. He's very, very... He almost murders Mike. So yeah, that's horse sense. Good times. So before we get into our normal questions, so what did you think of the movie? You know, I think this is going to be surprising to you because of this wonderful conversation we've had. But it was... Not my favorite. Okay. Is it because you hate rural people? You could admit it. No one's going to hear this. <laughs> That's true. No one is going to hear this. You, you hate the pores? <laughs> I I hate people who live in the middle of the woods. Mm. Like me. <laughs> there was no woods there. So that's so you liked Tommy. Yeah, Tommy was great. This entire movie was fantastic because no one lived in the middle of the woods. So I'll ask you some specifics first. Okay. What do you think of the acting, specifically of Mike and Tommy? I thought Tommy was good. I think he did a really good job. I think Mike was too over the top for my taste. Okay. Tommy's a great actor for how young he is. Yeah, he did a good job. Yeah. He did a good job. For Mike, I almost feel like that was the director who said, give me more shithead please yeah he did a good job though of being a shithead he was the biggest shithead he was the shittiest so, of heads you know 10 out of 10 there and yeah i think it was fine okay. fine acting a little over the top on the shitheadness but what do you think of the moral of the story to not be a shithead pretty good you think that's the moral not be a shithead support your family and don't be a shithead to your family okay what do you think of like the kind of the juxtaposition of the family's just totally different morals and like ways of lives kind of like coinciding with each other through Tommy and Mike? 
they definitely had different ways of life, but I don't think that they really had different morals. I mean, clearly Tommy's family is a very hardworking family, but it seemed like Mike's parents were also pretty hardworking. Um, they were into giving back to their community because they went to some charity event somewhere that we don't know anything about. Uh, I maybe think those, we, those charity events are just like kind of people. Maybe their own we're going to go with they were giving back to their community. Okay. Um, but to me, it seemed like they were people who worked for their money and that they were disappointed in Mike that he was taking everything for granted, uh, throwing things away and treating his family poorly. Totally agree with that. But I'm, I'm guessing I'm mainly talking about just between Mike and Tommy on their kind of mindsets. Oh, yeah, yeah. They definitely have totally different mindsets. Yeah. And part of me wonders if it's like a situation where Mike's parents earned all the money, but Mike just grew up with money. So definitely. he's just taking it for granted. Yeah. The one thing I don't like is that I wish that Mike kind of taught Tommy something. I feel like Tommy didn't really learn anything from Mike. No. Which... Well, he did learn how to be a little bit of a shithead. Yeah, but, like, that didn't serve any purpose, really. Yeah. It was just, like, it retaliation. It wasn't something beneficial really that came out of it. No, but you didn't say you wanted him to learn something sure, beneficial. Sure. <laughs> Fair. No, that's a good point. That was the one thing I kind of wish happened, but... That Mike had some sort of redeeming quality. Yeah, yeah. Before, well, he did at the end. Yeah, he, he before he had his his we'll say a coming of age moment. Even but not, though, he but was, not even that. I just wish that because Tommy clearly taught, or Tommy's family at least taught Michael certain things, like you have to work hard for things and stuff like that, and don't just take whatever's given to you. Stuff like and stuff, stuff along those lines. But Tommy didn't learn any lessons from anyone in this movie. And he's the youngest ca character and one of the protagonists. So that's kind of what I wish happened here. That's fair. But overall, I like this movie. What do you like about it? So kind of what I went into before, like I like the difference in their lifestyles and how kind of someone in like a very rich, not like pompous, but like not caring about things in the world, having no worries, no real issues in life, going to a situation like this where they kind of have to work hard and like physically get dad into the mud literally in this movie and kind of work their way through what's going on. Don't have like everything given to them anymore. I kind of like those stories like that. So it kind of resonated with me, I would say. Okay. So, and also like I wasn't bored at all during this entire movie. I don't know if I was bored, but there were times that I definitely thought, okay, I get it. Mike's a jerk. Yeah. I mean, they could take it out can a few move scenes. On. I agree with mm -hmm. that. Sure. And then, there were a lot of montages in this movie, too. Yeah. Is that a, uh, not all of the movies we've watched, but a fair few have had a lot, a lot of montages. Yeah, I agree. And Maybe children this like was that. no exception. I don't know. Do they? I don't know. It's been a while since I've been a young child. We'll do some market research. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get into our questions. So the first one is, well, I'll start with this one. What was your favorite scene of the movie? I didn't have a favorite scene. Oh, man. You hated this movie that much? Nothing really stood out as something that I particularly enjoyed. Okay. That's fair, I guess. The majority of the movie was Mike being a jerk until he suddenly realizes that he shouldn't be a jerk. Yes. And that was it. Very so fair. there wasn't really anything that stood out as this is much better than everything else <laughs> yeah so my serious answer is when they had the heart to heart after he's building the fence when they finally came to like some sort of like realization of their relationship and stuff like that i really liked that scene um but jokingly i liked when he had to move all the poop <laughs> so the the heart to heart scene was most definitely in place of the father-son talk that's in yeah. most of the other movies uh -huh. absolutely because no, he's the father figure mm -hmm. in this because there's no more father so I did think about that scene as my favorite, but it was overshadowed by what happened later in the movie because there's a scene a little bit after where Mike is watching the horses go by and he can name every single horse. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's 50 of them and Tommy has only gone through their names once. 
There's no way that Mike remembers all well, those he was days. there for a month. Yeah, but the scene where Tommy is sharing the names is towards the end of that month. Right. No, I guess so. How do you learn 50 horse names? Horses. I'm sorry, but horses don't look that different. Okay, that's very so, racist of you. Huh? Uh, it's horsist, Sam. <laughs> Animalist. Um, so m- thinking about the heart to heart scene made me annoyed because it made me think of the other scene that could in no way happen where Mike okay. remembers all of the horse yeah, names. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. So it's a, yes, it's petty, but it's a thing. All right. So I think we're on the same answer for this one. Mm-hmm. Who would you most want to hang out with? Arlene. Me too. Yeah. I knew it. I knew we'd have the same answer. Arlene. Arlene. She makes really good food and she's cool as hell. She really puts Mike in his place, which I liked. Yes. She's the first one to do it, which is great. It seems like in California, she's the only one to do it, really. Well, until the parents find out about what actually happened. If they knew what happened beforehand, they would have put him in his place. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. Just they were ignorant to what was going on. Mm, they were they were away at a charity event to give back to their community. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I liked Arlene from the start, even before she put Mike in his place. Yes. She was making those lemongrass shots for him. She Disgusting was a team player. Yep. Oh, lemongrass shots are awful. All Ooh. right. You choose the next one. Which characters did you ship? All right. So this is going to be a little weird. Uh-oh. It's a little incestuous, but there was a uh, connection between these two characters. Ooh. So I'll say Michael Ooh. and Tommy's mother. No. They share blood, Sam. <laughs> no. I mean, No. Maybe just as friends, but they were definitely, the way they were looking at each other, they were very, very, you know, close with each other, despite well, barely knowing each other. I mean, IRL, they're probably only a few years apart, so. <laughs> he might be older than her. <laughs> so Maybe. Got, to be clear to the audience, I'm talking about the actor and the actress that play those characters, not the characters themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should be together. <laughs> to avoid being canceled. <laughs> All right. So who did you ship together? Oh, Mule and Twister, 100%. <laughs> I don't think we mentioned one thing that Mule did the entire movie. I mean, he didn't really do much. Oh, no, no, no. But, you know, Mule and Twister were oh, so riding funny. together all the time, so they're clearly the only choice. It's a Brokeback Mountain situation. Oh, yeah. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one question that I did not have to think about, Mule and Twister. All right. So what would you change in this movie? I would have had Mike get an A at the beginning of the movie on his paper. And I feel like that would have changed a lot of okay, the for later tone. On. Yeah. yeah. Well, for later on, um, it would have shown that Mike can be dedicated to something or put effort into something. Uh, I feel like the fact that he got a D... It didn't really add much. We already knew that he's kind of pretty lazy and a jerk from everything else in the movie. So they could have at least given him this. And it would have set up the end where they're looking back at the paper to learn about the land trust. Well, I think it shows that he doesn't try hard. He doesn't really care about much besides like superficial things. And that despite not working hard for anything, he's got a nice car, lives in a big house, he goes to college for free, he's set up for life with the trust. I think it just shows that he's like a very, very privileged individual to kind of contrast him with Tommy. Yeah, I get that. But I just think that even without him getting the D on this test. Oh, he got the D. we, (laughs) We got those qualities about mike from so from the rest of the movie oh yeah that's hammered into our heads yeah a lot totally we did great. not need that one little thing yeah. so they could have he could have even made a comment about i didn't even study like they could have just handled it differently but still shown that he possibly has a brain and that this knowledge that's used later in the movie didn't come from nowhere okay that's fair mm-hmm. So what I would have changed is, I don't think we even talked about the scene, which is probably an oversight on our part, 
But when the horse gets stuck in the mud and they have to free the horse out of the mud. Right. This is the second scene where his shirt gets dirty. Yeah. Yeah. I wish that it was a more dangerous situation. So they would kind of like bond more because of it. Because I feel like it was just like the horse was in danger. But like Tommy, like the horse kind of like kicks out at Tommy a little bit. But like just totally misses him. He just like falls backwards. So I kind of wish it was more like danger involved. Like Tommy gets stuck somewhere and Michael has to help him out. I kind of felt like it was a dangerous situation. But for the horse mainly. Well, for the horse and for Tommy. I guess he tied um, him to like the lasso, whatever, to hold him up. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't feel like Tommy was particularly safe in the situation. I felt like there were a lot of opportunities for him to get hurt. See, I wanted more of a Johnny Tsunami situation <laughs> with the cliff. Life or death. It was like, he might die here. We This is crazy. I wanted that. <laughs> I want that in every movie now. <laughs> Xenon almost dies. Those are the two best ones so far. Someone has to almost die in those movies. What I'm going to do is pre-watch all of the movies and at random times, you're going to think I'm playing it on Disney Plus, but I'm not. I'm going to play my own version and just put that scene from Johnny Tsunami. And superimpose their faces on it. Not even that. It's just, oh, just that, that clip. I'll Johnny. be like, this movie is yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Life or death, that's what I'm after. So the movie was okay, but then like 46 minutes in, there's one really good scene that I loved. And then like, it kind of got bad <laughs> after that, but I really enjoyed that one scene. It was the clip scene. <laughs> Every time it's the clip scene. <laughs> All right, let's get to, I think my favorite part of the show is Hot Seat. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Uh, you can start. All right, so my question is, what was the biggest culture shock you felt in your life, just like Mike feels when he goes to Montana? I think the biggest culture shock was a job that I worked at where the town where I worked, like everyone was white. Um, so growing up, I lived in a pretty diverse town, went to a diverse school. Um, I went to a fairly diverse college. I lived in Queens for a couple years, which is the most, I think the most diverse county in the country. I think so. And then I worked in a town where it was predominantly white. This was after college and everything? Yes. Oh, okay. And working in... In a town where everyone, not that everyone looked the same, but that there was very little diversity. It was just strange. It wasn't what I grew up with. It wasn't what I was used to. There were people who came into the library where I worked who were people of color and of diverse backgrounds, but not to the extent that I had grown accustomed to. And that, it was a bit of a culture shock. Yeah. And also the town that I worked in was also much richer than I was used to. <laughs> so that was also a culture shock. Yeah. How about you? Joanna, that was my question. Yeah, but I want to know your answer to it. I think my biggest culture shock, probably going to college, I would say. Um, I think a lot of it's just like being away from your family, not seeing them all the time. So I don't know if it's really a culture shock per se, but I think culture a little bit was different. I went to school in Massachusetts. And the people there were pretty different. I guess in terms of like the whole background thing, a lot of my friends in college had never met a Jewish person before, which was interesting um, and very bizarre to me. But I would say pretty much that's my, for sure, my biggest kind of culture shock was going away to college. By culture, do you mean accent? Accent was a huge part <laughs> of the, the Boston accent was, you know, wicked crazy. If you ask me. <laughs> that and Patriot's Day. Oh, well, uh, the biggest culture shock positive way was being off for Patriots Day every year, which I thought it was in celebration of the New England Patriots, which it wasn't. But it should have been a great day. I just ran I was like ready to go to class and they were like, What are you doing? It's, it's Patriots Day. And I was like, pulling a prank on me? Like what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's Marathon Monday. Yeah. So what is uh what was your hot seat question? Have you ever ridden ridden a horse? Have I ever ridden a horse? I don't have any actual recollection of doing that. I'm sure I did at some point, like one of those like birthday parties where like riding like a pony or something, but I don't have any real recollection of riding a horse, unfortunately. How about you? 
So my recollection of riding a horse is at a birthday party. Yeah, I feel like that's really the big thing. They like tie the horse to like the rope, whatever, in the middle. Uh, oh, if it's a pony, I guess, not if it's a horse. Yeah, it was definitely my birthday party. Wait, this is a dumb question. Mm-hmm. Are ponies and horses different? I think so. They're not just young horses because those are calves, right? No, those are cows. Yeah, cows have calves. Horses have foals? Yeah, so they're not just baby horses, ponies. They're just small, miniature. What's a miniature horse, though? I think they're just called miniature horses, or I don't know. So there's three different things, horses, miniature horses, and ponies? And don't even get me started on donkeys and mules. Well, yeah, that, well, those are di- those are different. <laughs> All right, so now we're done with our hot seat. And now we're going to another segment of the show, which I just made up this week and haven't told you about. No, this is a surprise. And he apparently made it up at the beginning of the week, but told me about it just before we started recording. And not even what it is, just that he's going to do something. So I thought about this before um, because I don't know how I pronounced the word before. It made me think of it. So this is, you know how like there's the Bechdel test? Yeah. So this is going to be the Alexis Bledel test. (laughs) Where we see if any characters in this movie were also in Gilmore Girls <laughs> at any point in time. <laughs> okay. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to ask you okay. two questions. All right. Well, one question for now. Do you think any characters in this movie were ever in an episode of Gilmore Girls? Yes. I don't know which one. I just feel confident that someone at some point made an appearance in Gilmore Girls. Okay, and if you had to guess which character, there could be multiple, there could be none, but if there was one character that was in Gilmore Girls, which character would it be? <laughs> Mule. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, you could guess Mule. But I don't think it's Mule. Although if it is Mule, that would be great. Maybe it's probably the mom, Tommy's mom, or Mike. Tommy's mom or Michael? Yes. You were kind of close. So okay. there is a character, you got the first part right, there is a character that was in Gilmore Girls okay. in season six, but it was Mule. Michael's mom. Whoa. Yeah. You are really close. I was really close. They are sisters so in the, the movie. the actress's name is Leanne Hunley, and she plays JC, which I don't think they mentioned JC at all. During the movie, do they? That is her I name. I thought they just said mom. Yeah, I don't think they said either of the mom's names. Maybe Tommy's mom's name came up at some point because they were like eating what dinner together or whatever. But yeah, so JC was in an episode of Gilmore Girls. Two episodes, actually. Cool. And one of the producers of this movie was also a producer for that. But who gives a shit? I do, Sam. I give a shit. You give a shit? I, I give many shits. <laughs> All right, so that's passes it. the Alexis Bledel test. <laughs> so that's it for the Bledel, <laughs> Bledel corner. Uh, and the last thing we have is your predictions corner from the last movie, mm-hmm. which, which I did not Not even worth listening again. I think you did mention there's going to be a horse, but I think you said there's like two girls. You were just way off on this yeah, one. I thought that there was going to be like a, a psychic connection with yeah. a horse. Yeah, no. I was way off. Which makes I was sense. way off. Because like sixth sense, horse sense, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's what I was totally thinking. Totally makes sense. Does not make sense. Here, unfortunately. So the next movie, you ready for your prediction? Yes, I'm ready. The next movie is called Up, Up, and Away. What happens in this movie? Uh, My first thought was that it has to do with an airplane and the main character flies somewhere. Okay. Uh, Main character, who are they? Gender. I want to see female. Age. 13 to 15. What color hair? Brown. What color eyes? I don't know. Hazel. What's her best friend's name? Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> that's a female best friend? Yes. So it's, it's a me. girl? with. I'm in this movie. Girl with a female best friend. She flies? I think they take a, a plane somewhere. Her and her friend take a plane somewhere. <laughs> Is she flying the plane? No. Okay. So this 13 to 15 year old girl is on a flight with her friend. And what is the conflict? They crash. They crash? Yeah. The airplane? Yeah. Okay. And then it's it's just Lord of the Flies. 
but just her and her friend. Oh, well, so the school trip. Maybe yeah, it's a school trip. School and trip. They crash. It's yep. a castaway crossed with the Lord of the, Fl- no, Lord it's of the just Flies. just straight up Lord of the Flies. No, I just mean like the airplane crashing on like a. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some more deserted. Mm-hmm. Or the episode of Simpsons when that happens, which is just Lord of the Flies, but with Simpsons. Remember that one? Maybe. Yeah. I'm sure if I watched it, I would remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. All right. Yeah. So Actually, no, I guess it would be more like Beauty Queens by Libra Bray. I don't know. Which is it. Lord of the Flies, but with teenage girls who are beauty pageant contestants, and it's hilarious. This is a movie or is this a book? It's a book. Uh, interesting. So they stole the premise of the book. Yeah, she's very upfront about it. Like it, in the blurb, it says, based on Lord of the Flies. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. like female Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. And and bird up with Lizzo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anything else you want to add for our audience before uh, we go? I wish there, there were a catchphrase in this movie that I could say. Um, bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>